what's up guys and welcome to another video this is a car I've been waiting to drive for a really long time I know that I know I say that about a lot of cars that I drive but I've been looking at these cars to potentially purchase for myself for the better part of like three or four years and I've never even test driven one so this is Oleg here and this is his 2001 Toyota MR2 third generation so it's the ZZW chassis code right yep so tell me about your car uh, well, I got this car about a couple of months ago. Uh, pretty much I was looking for something lightweight and uh, kind of in the hopes of daily driving it. So I um, started with looking at the Miatas here and there and turned out they're all kind of overpriced and kind of beat up. Um, and so a couple of them are twos came up in the search. Um, went to test drive uh, one or two of them. Uh, and they're actually surprisingly fun and uh, price-wise they're actually lower than uh, uh, than the Miatas. So I went to an extensive comparison uh, research between the two and it turns out that this car uh, has a pretty good uh, leg up on, uh, on the Miata in certain aspects. So this car has 138 horsepower, um, weight is 2150. The NB Miata is about I think 200-150 pounds uh, heavier. Um, so the power to weight ratio in this car is a little bit better. Um, also another thing that supposedly is better is the chassis rigidity in this car. Uh, it's been a little bit, um, it's supposedly a little bit stiffer than the Miata. Again, I'm not sure okay. if that's the case, but that's what I heard. You have the engine in the back, so it's a mid-engine. So the engine's the 1ZZ, right? Uh, yeah, the engine in this car is a, is a really common engine. It's a 1ZZ engine, four-cylinder, 1.8 liter. Uh, variable uh, lift on the intake cam. Only the intake side, not Only the exhaust the intake, yep. Okay. You can find that engine anywhere in all of the same period, the Yoros. Like Corollas and whatever. Yeah, four-cylinder engines, they're, they're pretty much uh, pretty abundant. So what have you done in terms of mods besides the hardtop, obviously? Uh, so when I got the car, I had to kind of come through it and um, do a whole bunch of maintenance, you know, all the fluids, gaskets, there are a couple of oil leaks here and there. Um, shocks were blown out, it, was, it had like three different uh, brand tires on it. Um, so I put Yakahama S drive tires on this car, stock sizing. Uh, I put Kony, uh, Kony Sport yellow shocks, okay. adjustables, main lowering springs. My idea wasn't to go with the coilovers. You wanted the comfort aspect. I wanted the comfort. Um, and plus, there is no really uh, good option for coilovers to go with to begin with. Okay. Um, so I decided to just go ahead and uh, keep that car more or less for canyons and in order for that to happen it has to be on a softer side. Need compliance. Yeah. Right? I could see this like coming out of out of the factory with this suspension. Yeah, so I mean I have I have an S two thousand that's completely set up for the track and everything. And that car, yeah, driving that car on the street is, is impossible. Miserable, right? Yeah. So I didn't want to go the same route again. Right. I wanted to go something that's, you know, in the middle, something that I can take to the canyons and have fun with. Softer suspension, lightweight, <clears throat> seems to fit the build perfectly. All right, so let's start pushing a little bit harder and see how it feels. I mean, just driving around at like five tenths right now, I absolutely love the seating position. Um, you actually feel like I'm sitting a little bit high up <clears throat> compared to like the steering wheel and the shifter. But the benefit of that is that it gives me really good visibility because you can see like the the arches for the fenders in the front so you can place the car the front exactly where you want it to super easy to heel toe the throttle response is really good you do have natural aspirated engines all right getting up there in the revs Because it's light and then not a whole lot of power, so you can actually go full throttle and just enjoy I, it. That's, yeah, I uh, barely have to brake. Yeah, that's kind of the, the fun of it. Like you take the S2000 on the Evo on this kind of road, you're you gonna can't, be you able, can't go full throttle. You can't go full throttle. You always gonna, it's always gonna be in your head. I mean, yes, it does reward you when you rev it out to like what 6700 or whatever. Yeah. But the mid range is not a huge difference from the top end. Yeah, so it's you pretty, can it's use the torquing. whole power band. It's pretty torquey. Like I'm at 4,000, 5,000, 55, 6,000. And it kind of just pulls consistently throughout. Yep. Now 
it's not uh, the most exciting sounding engine, I will say, but in terms of how it matches to the overall character of the car, I would say it's like 80% of what I would like ideally want. A lot of guys who own this car, they tend to swap the engine out and go for a 2cc swap, right. uh, which is kind of, um, you know, a B18C to B18B right, right. Uh, for Hondas. Equivalent. Um, so equivalent, right. So um, you get variable valve timing and lift on the, on the cam. So um, you get, if you go from 138 horsepower to, uh, to about 180. So you get that magical 100 horsepower per liter, basically. Right. Without force induction. Exactly. I'm planning on doing that at some point. So. Well, that's gonna be fantastic when you do that. Yeah, it's gonna feel pretty different. Pretty damn different, yeah. How about a K20 swap? Do people do that? People do that, and it's uh, it's a little bit more money. Um, you do get a little bit more power out of it, um, a little bit more mid-range torque, but... Yeah. Um, you want to keep the Toyota heritage, right? Too, right? You, you know, that's it's it's easier to swap to ZZ in. I okay. think it's going to be easier in terms of emissions. It's going to be easier in terms of resale, car resale value. Sure, sure. Um, and it just flows better. That upgrade kind of flows better with the character of the car. That totally you makes know, sense. That's when you start talking about people swapping LSs into different cars. And then, yeah. oh, that's it makes sense. And sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. So it depends on what you go for. You go right, for a loud right. performance, you put a less in. You, you want to keep a character of the car, um, you might go a different way. It's like why someone wouldn't swap a 2ZZ into an Integra. Like, because you want to keep a Honda. Right, it's simpler, right. It's you know, it maintains that resale value, and you just know that because it's a Honda engine and a Honda car, yeah, exactly. it's gonna work. That's why I can see why K-swaps are popular in the Integras, right? right? It makes sense. Um, also, the beauty about the 2CC swap in this car is that it effectively bolts right in. It's essentially what uh, Lotus did with the 2CC that Toyota should have just done in the first place with this car. Right, right. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Lotus and Toyota, they work together to, to, uh, to make that car. So, in a way, I can see why uh, why Toyota is like, all right, we're not gonna put 2ZZ in this car yeah. because it's just gonna be too close. Yeah. Man, this car's so fun. Just the fact that like the driver controls are so good makes me just enjoy driving it, even at 7 tenths. I would venture to say that the driver controls on this car are as good as an S2000. It's a little bit different. It doesn't feel as mechanical, but in terms of, you know, the lightness of it, because the, the whole like, uh, ethos of this car is lightness, right? Yeah, it's Everything is light, the steering's light, the, the shifter's light, the pedals are light, it's great. It's funny you compare it to the S2000 because, um, I mean, the shifting at this point is pretty, pretty much kind of there, and then, you know, we can start talking about the, the steering uh, feel. The steering feel in this car, um, I'd give it like 8 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah. And the steering wheel in this, the thousand is also less, around there. I would say a little bit less. A little bit less. Than in my yeah. yeah, just did the um, EBC yellow pads and uh, stainless steel brake lines, just to be on the safe side for the for the track. Okay. And uh, I think between that and the S drives, it should it should handle it. Yeah, the brakes. I, I forgot to mention earlier, the brakes are very confidence inspiring. It feels like it doesn't feel like a race pad where you get like almost no kind of um, bite on the initial pressure and then like it suddenly grabs it's, it's very linear mm -hmm. it feels pretty stocked let's do a actually let's do a quick little pull here since there's no one behind us see what first gear feels like <laughs> I feel like I can sip on my coffee and drink right you know? definitely eager. It's eager. The engine's eager. It just doesn't have a whole lot of top uh, end, I guess. Nope, nope. And that's why, you know, 2ZZ swaps. The 2ZZ is going to make it completely transform this. The chassis is amazing. Driver controls, the steering's all like about as good as you can ask from a freaking $2,000 car. Right. Like what more can you ask for? And 
to be honest, compared to, I know I crap on Miatas all the time. <laughs> Look, I do not hate Miatas. Like, I, I promise you, I actually really enjoy Miatas, but this car just has like that extra little edge to it that makes it feel special in a way that a Miata would only feel special if you dumped a bunch of money into mods, right? But this car, even with just a few little things, suspension and um, brakes, and like that's pretty much it, it feels special. It feels like almost like a tiny little exotic, you know? I mean, I still uh, put a good amount of money into this car, you know, to get it up to where it is. Right, right, right. In terms right. of, you know, I bought it for 2000 put it about, what, 4000 in it, I guess? 4000 Yeah, between all the, the high dollar. So you're about six grand into it. So I'm about six grand into it, which is still... That's still um, not a lot of money. I, I think it's still not bad for, for what it kind of came out to be. I totally agree. This, this is a lot of car for six grand, considering, like, the fit and finish of it. Right, exactly. All right, so thanks, Oleg, for letting sure. me drive your MR2. Um, hit me up when the 2ZZ is ready. Hell yeah. That's going to be a... Gonna that be that might be worth comparing to a Lotus Elise, because I know a few people with Elises. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah, comparing this car with 1ZZ, then this car with 2ZZ and the Lotus. Two, yeah. Between all that, it'll be interesting to see how it compares in terms of budget to performance. Absolutely. But yeah, overall, this car gets a huge nod for me. It's just the ethos of lightweight. I mean, I'm all about that. Some people aren't about that. If you if you like straight line performance, you're going to be sorely disappointed with this car. But if you like a nice, you know, raw handling driving experience, this car is really up there with uh, some of my favorite cars out there. Yep. So thanks guys for watching. Let me know um, what you think of the MR2, and I'll see you guys next time.